This is the Public Art Advisory Committee, Tuesday, January 18th, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. This meeting is compliant with the Ralph M. Brown Act as amended by California Assembly Bill Number 361, effective September 16th, 2021, providing for a public health emergency exception to the standard teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. The purpose of this is to provide a safe environment for the public staff and the committee while allowing for public participation. The public may address the committee during using exclusively remote public comment options. The committee may take action on any item listed on the agenda. To you can either uh, to address the committee, you can be on this meeting here. You may email aibera at brisbaneca.org. You may text 415-407-2675. All right. So Stuart, would you like to, oh, so the first part is, it's like everyone is for roll call. Um, Council member Cunningham. I am here. Council member Davis. Here. Park and Rec commissioner Greenlee. Here. Committee member Jeanette Davis. Here. Committee member Grossman. Here. Committee member Olivia Salmon. Here. All right. Um, for the approval of the minutes uh, for from October 27, 2021, do we Make have a motion. second? Second. All right. Roll call. Council member Cunningham. Aye. Council member Davis. Aye. Park and Rec Commissioner Greenlee. Aye. Committee member Davis. Uh, Danette Davis. Aye. Committee member Grossman. Aye. Committee member Olivier Simon. Aye. Great. All right, presentations and discussion items. So item B, discussion of land art presentations moderated by the Nevada Museum of Art Reno. Um, Stuart, do you wanna kick us off? Sure, or I mean, this was just to give everybody an opportunity as you talked about before, having some time to brainstorm and just talk back and forth about what you heard about the Nevada at the at, from the videos. Was there anything that you want to talk about? Is there anything that you want us to research more? Was there any any of those in particular that you thought maybe it'd be interesting to have somebody come and speak to us? So this is kind of what we were trying to do today is just give everybody a free forum between this item and the next item just to get a lot of ideas out on the table as to what people were interested in. I'll start. So I saw a few of them, but quite frankly, we are not in the business, my, in my humble view, we are not in the business of becoming professional art critics. We are not in the business of understanding the technical details that some of these specialists bring to the table, that is for our consultants to do, in my opinion. So I'm not interested in really doing much more with this at all. I did not watch all of the videos because I did not think it was a good use of my time. And I wouldn't recommend to counsel that we do stuff like this in the future. I don't think this was a good use of our time We've discussed so many other things that we need to do and not impressed. I'll leave it at that. Anybody else? So I'll throw that bomb right out there. Um, I watched, a, um, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I watched them and of course, you know, I enjoyed them all. Um, and it just kind of gives you reference for how other cities have done it. I do agree that none of us are art critics. I don't, I think a lot of what they came from were from people who were curators and who do these kind of things. And this is what they do, that they put forth forums and, and that's what it is. So in terms of getting, of gathering information on how people did this or how they had input, how they maneuvered different things, I thought was interesting. I thought it was interesting the way that they um, were able to get uh, people to be involved in the discussions. 
Um, I thought that was really interesting. I don't know if for the capacity, if the question is, do we want something like that for Brisbane? I don't know if Brisbane is large enough to do that, but I think that there were elements that would, that would inform us as to next steps or how we have discussions or who we want to look to, to possibly curate things of that sort. As a resource, I found it really interesting. Beth? I'm sorry, you, you're, you lit up, so I don't know if you... Uh, well, I was gonna just kind of wait and see what other people said and then add on. If, but um, if you, I, can, I can start and just... No, I just... Um, I, I, I guess I'll just say that um, I, I watched everyone. I was absolutely um, fascinated by them. Um, this is the world of public art. Um, this is a good, it was a really good background starting with some of the premier uh, academic critics um, that, um, and the history of where things have come from public art, like starting with the, you know, Robert Smithson and Michael Heiser and these people that just had really um, just thought that the land was theirs to move around as pleased because um, they were male artists in the world. And I think we've learned a lot since then. And really, I thought that by going through and taking a historical look at how land art has um, developed um, as, a, as a, a genre, and also looking at the difference of kind of earth art and the, the different forms of, of what could be called land art as public art, how important they are that we've learned as time of come on that we have to consider um, environmental concerns, the cultural concerns, the history of the land before, the way we interact with community, the way that we involve um, community and history, the kinds of things that we wanna think about when we're actually moving land or putting even a sculpture on land. Um, what are the signifiers? I think it's, it was like every one of them was um, really, was a brilliant conference of a lot of the key players. Um, uh, they mentioned probably f at different times, 50 different artists that we may wanna look towards that um, have done signature works around the world. Um, so for somebody who is on a commission um, like ours, this was, I thought, really critical background material. And, um, and even then was just <laughs> touching the surface. This is a really, really big field and there's a lot to learn. And um, I thought that they did an incredible job with this conference um, and that uh, I also really loved the way that they um, worked in other social issues such as inclusion of people of color um, and thinking about being on different native lands and also um, the role that women played and inclusion of women artists um, in a tradition traditionally male field. It was so rich and um, you know, certain ones were better than, were more interesting or more applicable than others, I would definitely say. Um, I could probably look through that list again and maybe make some recommendations. Um, but I, I was also really hoping that it would open up our discussions to be um, on a deeper, more um, educated um, level of what could be possible in, in terms of when we do have large sums of money and can really think about um, creating a master plan for something that would be um, really make an, ha have a, a significant impact, create an identity um, and also be the kind of art that we want to be proud of to live with for um, long periods of time and that it would also be um, friendly to the earth and the land. Um, I managed to get through all of them. I think there's 12. And uh, I would say I'd have to agree with Karen. I found it to be a hard um, uh, conference or session. I don't know what we call it. I'm trying to educate myself on the land art 
and earthworks. I'm not sure that I understand if there is a difference. There's a lot of questions I have. Uh, I felt it was very, uh, it was like I was thinking I was taking 101 and I felt like I was taking a graduate class. So for me, like a lot of it was, I, I don't know what they're talking about. And I think maybe if you're in the art world or if you're an artist, like I think you could really geek out on this. But for me, it was, it was tough. I was muscling through it. Um, you know, some of them were people talking on Zoom calls and taking chats and I'm like, okay, but what does this have to do with me trying to figure out what this is? I was like, what is this land art, land works, whatever we call it, I don't even know. Anyways, um, you know, I was a kind of appalled in the very beginning when I saw like the double negative and this guy that, you know, created this, I don't know, crater or canyon in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, that's art, are you kidding me? So I was like, oh no, what are we thinking? Um, and then the spiral jetty, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but I thought, okay, well, what about the environment? You could just do this. So, um, you know, and then some of them like were forests with pieces of metal running like in the forest. And I'm like, okay, so we're paying somebody to do that. I mean, some of it was like, I don't get it. I mean, honestly, um, there were other pieces that um, I thought were interesting. The project in Nevada where the it was like trying to deal with the water and and how it flows and under the freeway and a place where people could come together. So I think, you know, I, I, I'm still not sure that after 12 hours of going through every session, I'm still not sure that I really have a grasp. I think, I, I mean, I know a little bit more. I think um, maybe the Baylands seems to be like a place for that kind of thing. Um, I was trying to figure out like what's, because some of them like will have like, you know, a fence around a bunch of plants. And that was also considered land art. And I'm, but I'm thinking, well, that looks like landscaping to me. So is it all the same as landscaping and land art and earthworks? Like I'm still a little bit confused with a lot of that. Um, my favorite one was the pinata guy, I forget his name. Um, and his had to do with pieces that were in museums. So his was the easiest for me to follow. He, he was very concise, but some of them just rambled on and on. And I was like, oh, <laughs> what is this? So it was, it was tough for me. So there you go. So I think if, I think, I mean, I think the education is good, but I think it needs to be something like for me as a lay person, I'm, if I'm trying to educate myself and I kind of need the one-on-one and not like the graduate class. Or like me, I'm just like, I can barely get into the Zoom. If I went to Macworld, I would be like, okay, so what is all this? It's just, you know, I'm like, it's out of my league. So that's what I'm saying is like, I, we're all at different levels. And for me, I'm like, and some of like, I didn't know what that was called. So I was trying to, and then I ended up going on the internet. I'm like, well, what is this? I'm trying to figure it out. I figured, you know, maybe a, you know, a, a YouTube tutorial would have been, maybe that an hour of that would have, you know, kind of summarized it for me. So that's where I am. Lisa and Madison, do either of you want to add? Well, I did not have time to, to go to the seminar. I know about land art. I've seen a lot of it. Um, and I think that it's a really worthy field. Again, I don't think that I, you know, for me, the idea of land art is very site specific mm -hmm. and I don't, I can't imagine the site in my head and don't have the imagination right now to figure out like how to tackle that. Um, but I'm open to what comes up. Um, and it seems like something that would happen way in the future because looking at our little map of city of Brisbane owned property that, that we're kind of considering it, you know, it's all very tiny and uh, the sites are very tiny and being on the park and rec commission I'm more concerned about what we can do with our sites that we have in our public view right now. And um, anyways, that's about as deep as I wanna get into that. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I agree with so much of what was said 
Um, and it was hard for me to necessarily visualize like a space. And I mean, a lot of, obviously like we always want to think the Baylands is going to be like this big area of opportunity, but in reality, like so much of that is just going to be a fight. The whole process is going to be a fight. And so to identify like large spaces of land for something like this, I think is probably going to end up being really low on the totem pole of requests. Um, and so I kind of, for the Baylands, visualize things that are maybe like attached to buildings and that sort of thing. It's just going to be a lot more of an urban environment than, you know, what Brisbane has ever felt like before. And there's like the density, I think, is like something that is kind of hard to grab to wrap your head around at this point in time. But um, from what I'm expecting, I think it's gonna be quite dense. So I just don't know that like, when I think about where these things are going to occur, I just, again, like Lisa said, don't have something, you know, that's like, oh, this would be perfect for that. And that doesn't mean that that opportunity won't present itself. Um, it's also, you know, there's so many, um, habitat concerns, I feel like with a lot of the land that we do have and contamination concerns and that sort of thing, that I think that that comes into play in, in what would make a suitable site. Um, I do agree with the comment that it felt a little bit more advanced. Um, I could totally see Beth like in there just like totally nerding out because this is totally within her wheelhouse, I imagine. And, um, but for me, just kind of the same as what Danette said, for me, I'm coming in, uh, I need like more introductory. Um, so anyhow, that's, that's my take. Anybody else want to add anything? If everyone's gone, I I would like to make another comment. Has everyone gone? Oh no, I'd like to say one thing. I I agree with everything, and I and I think a lot about the land or or it would be further down the line. But I think the one thing that we need to take away from those that we saw or didn't see or the ones we did see is that to know that there are resources. That's that's really what it's about, just resources. And the fact that there are resources out there that may inspire you to look up something else like Danette did, is all good. That's all good. So from that perspective, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, we, we are going to make decisions more on, you know, what kind of consultants do we want? We want to bring in people who are really experts on a particular topic. We're not going to spend our time becoming those experts. We couldn't. We, we, you know, we'd need to go to school for eight, 10 years to do that. And you know, just because we're passionate about a particular topic doesn't mean we need to spend a lot of time looking at things when we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we talked about um, a couple of years ago on top of that was you know, visitation and, and what can we do there? I mean, they're the things where we can start learning. And, you know, they're little pieces of things that we can wrap our heads around and, um, you know, get some fun things done in town on the things that are, I mean, that's obviously the next thing on our agenda, but, you know, we, we need to be spending our time and spending our resources on the things that we can affect. And, and if there was a class on how to choose a consultant, Maybe that's something we need to look at. Stuart, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, how do we, how do we pick a great consultant to help us navigate the little things, the medium-sized things, and then those huge things that are going to be, as far as I can see, 20 years down the road. So um, if at all, you know. So that would be my additional comments to this. What do you guys think about that idea? Beth, you want to speak? Yeah, um, well, I did just send out a link today, which um, came out just before our meeting. And there are um, there is an organization called Forecast Public Art. They're out of Minneapolis. 
Um, and they do have training sessions um, on how to think about public art. And um, the thing is, is that what I was really hoping by suggesting this conference, and I, I really appreciated Danette's honesty about that. And, and I think that in a lot of ways it worked and that it made her look things up is that, um, that to really just kind of know that there's all different levels of public art. And there's also the temporary, which I, I think we're gonna talk about later too, and the performative and everything else. And so I think that there is not gonna ever be one consultant that can handle all of it. In fact, they're gonna be consultants on all the different levels, Karen, that you mentioned, the small ones, the medium ones, and the big, the big land art ones. What I would like, what I was hoping, and I think, you know, for those of you that watched it, I, I think that you got a sense of that this is a, it's a big world of artists and possibility and, that even though um, Madison, as you mentioned, it's gonna be really dense. If we don't have a vision of what we would like to have in the beginning before it becomes dense, I mean, it's possible to integrate land art into a dense population situation where we can create an environment that people actually wanna live in that is connected to the history of the place or the culture of the, of, of the surrounding cultures and all those kinds of things. But if we don't have, um, a vision of it before it gets carried away and becomes built dense um, and densely populated and, de um, and densely built environment, then it's just gonna be like everywhere else, like what's going on in South City. And um, I don't know, I think that we have, um, we have more imagination than that. And um, so um, I, um, I'm excited that, as many of you did watch some of them or, or all of them and, and muscled through it if you had to and looked up things. And um, I just wanna kind of have a sense that um, of really expanding our thinking and the possibilities around what public art is and um, from the beginning, because we're also in the process of still working on our implementation guidelines. And if you're talking, you know, small pieces along Visitation Avenue versus large development in integrating public art into the development of, of uh, built environments, um, those are two really different kinds of implementation guidelines that we really need to think about at this point. And if we don't have the full picture of what's possible, then we're gonna miss some really important things and find ourselves in troublesome situations later. Um, yes, I mean, I I can understand. I agree, and I think you know, going to Karen's point, is there are national organizations out there that are that deal with public art. I mean, the one that I try and follow is American for Arts, which is a national organization out of Washington D.C., which is where I've gotten my RFPs for. So, I mean, there are plenty of there are those, and we can put together resources from the different art organizations to talk about how to pick a, how to choose different consultants for different aspects. I think one of the things that Beth said at the beginning in wrapping up about the about this, it's what are the values that you wanna to bring to your public art? I think was one of the things that was talked about um, during the different aspects. You know, do you worry, do you care about what the environment, what the impact on the environment was? Back in the 60s and 70s when the environment really wasn't considered, the question was, you know, that were, you know, my art is more important than the environment. And what happened in the, you know, the response to that is no, the environment is as is equally important as the art or the art should be part of the environment and should enhance the environment like it did with the drainage project. And you make a drainage product project a gathering spot as opposed to just a spot in the land that's a low point. So I think those are the kinds of, you know, as opposed to maybe trying to specifically say, I like that, I didn't like that, maybe talking more about what are the values of our community, the idea of environmentalism, the idea of multiculturalism, the, you know, and recognizing that art is in conversation with itself and in conversation with the community is always an important aspect. So, you know, you, you know, I, I knew very little about land art going into it. I have an understanding through different friends about art itself and the understanding of the conversation that art is in, the conversation that art has. So you start taking the idea of the double negative and what, you know, that's an impact on the environment itself. 
and then you go to, you know, and it's mostly men, and then you have the women come back and say, you shouldn't be impacting the environment that way. You should be taking care, you know, you should, you should have, you could have big pieces of art, but that, or maybe they're transitory. What, and I don't remember the person who just came to San Francisco because her art is there and it goes away, but it still has an, it still has an impact on the, on the landscape. It, 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 to some extent, you know, her perspective is I want to erase man's impact on the environment through the use of smoke. So you start having those kinds of conversations. And I think as a committee, that seems to be, you know, as we start talking about what's gonna go on in the Baylands or even what we're gonna do on visitation, what are the values that we want to engender? When you talk about what happened with the project on the skateboard park, what we had is we reacted to different people's visions of it without selling the, without putting it out in the RFP, what are the values that we want to be part of it? I mean, what we said is we want that to be reflective of the community. And the artist came out, talked to the community and said, this is what the community says is reflective. And when the committee looked at it, it we had different artists who had different reflections of the community. And that becomes an interesting question is what are the values? And so maybe having, you know, if, if the land art conference at least gets to the idea that there are different values that you can bring towards to public art, then in it, that in and of itself may be a worthwhile conversation that we may want to have it if, as we're talking about what we're going to do on visitation or what we're going to do at the marina or what we're going to do on the Baylands, what are the values that we want to bring to those pieces of art and what, what's the statement that we as a community want to say about it. And we may want to say different things in different areas. Mm -hmm. So I think all those are important. And then the other conversation you may want to have as a committee is maybe you have different pieces of art that are in conversation with each other and have a different perspective on a, on a similar topic. So that way you can look at two different pieces of art and say, okay, you know, that's one perspective of life and here's another perspective of life. So I think those are the kinds of conversations I think as a committee that for me, when I was watching the land art, you know, I, I, I'm not an artist. I didn't, I don't have my degree in art history. I, mine, mine is much more in a philosophy perspective. And that's what caught my eye was the philosophy of art. Mm -hmm. So that may, be, that may be a better conversation for this committee to have going forward. Hey, as opposed Stuart, to- Stuart, a question for you. The subcommittee that is set up to um, decide what to do with the land out at Syrup, that strip of land out at Sierra Point, Mm -hmm. How do we fit into that conversation? So we are, so they are looking to hire a park architect to, you know, similar to what we did with the Crocker Industrial Park and with similar with the Industrial Park or Trail, sorry, you know, the Public Art Committee will be one of the groups that will be interviewed as to what their, what their thoughts are for that. So the Public Art Committee will have a say as to, will have input at the beginning of the process. Uh, after the after they're chosen, we'll have as input as to what that could possibly look like from a public art perspective. So when the Crocker Trail people talked, there was very much of a conversation about having murals on the buildings, and that got incorporated into the trail master plan. So you might you might have a similar kind of conversation about what kind of a public art would you want to see incorporated down at in that portion of Sierra Point. Would it, would it be oh, no. would it would it be useful to let this committee know as a whole the scope of that project now just so you know if they happen to be out there recreating or doing whatever that you know their, their mind can be attuned to the, the piece of land itself Would that be sure so yep so the city owns the what used to be the restaurant portion of the of the Sierra Point. So as you're driving into Sierra Point, it, you dead end and you turn left or right at the very, at the end of Sierra, Sierra Point Parkway maybe? I don't know my roads down there, but right before the marina, there's a large piece of land. There's a empty land to the left, which is a hotel site owned by VDI. And I'm using my hands, I can't see them because they're off camera. Um, and then there is another piece of land right in front of it. And then you have the marina green behind it. So we own the large parcel of land, and I think it's about 
one and a half, two acres of land, Angel, um, that we're looking at trying to design that into a park and also along, incorporate that into the Marina Green area and have that being a park, a, 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 you know, a park for the city, for the community. Is that where they put those benches up and they have some kind of dirt road path kind of thing? Is that the land that you're talking about? That strip that goes along? I don't, I don't think so. I'm looking at the map right now. And I, are you talking about that long, skinny blue line that kind of goes? No, no, that's a long. I'm trying to figure out what, where that, where you're talking about. I'm so, looking at um, the map. I'm looking at the map. You, can you bring the map up? Angel? Is it this long skinny thing? Yeah, that's the marina. That's the marina green. That's the marina green. So you're talking about this over here, this big spot yeah. over here. Wait, hold on. Well, no, wait. Let me. No, I'm wrong. Down here is the marina green. That where there's a little circular. That's thing. the marina. That's the marina this right there. This is the marina. This right. So that's the, and then no, that's 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 along Highway that's along, 101. That's along Bayshore. All right. right. So if you I, along okay. 101. So if you look, if, yeah, if you look at the marina. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sharing. Perfect. Yay. Okay. So this, so if you look, okay. So if you bring it down to the marina, as opposed to along Bay Shore and the lagoon. So if we go down further, oh, oh wait, it's probably hidden by everybody here. So the circular, the, the circle, the semicircle. Right there. Right, yes, yeah. right there. That's that is a parcel of land that we recently got control of, and that we're working to design a park for. The blue, the big blue parcel at the end uh -oh. is, a, is parking lots. So that's a so up the top of them, up, up top of Sierra Point, that's a parking lot. So the Marina Green is a very thin is the thin green line that goes between the marina and the lower level parking lots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the, the parcel that we're talking about that we're gonna look to design a park is where that circle is. Does but that all help? That, but, but all that blue area, all of that blue area is potential site for some public art. Um, it could be, I mean, a lot of the blue area in the uh, at Sierra Point are parking lots or shared use parking lots. So you could put public art in a in you a in a parking public, lot area. You could it would make it you can make it look more interesting. You could yeah. also I, I know it would probably drive public works crazy, but you could think about how do you design your parking light standards to make them more artistic in as opposed to just your normal parking light standard. So yes, anything there could be you, you could look at it and say, yeah, you know, we do want to have public art throughout that. And what do we want it to look like? It doesn't just have to be statues. It could be, um, it, you know, it could be the way that it could, you know, for the park itself, it could be the way the land is formed. Mm -hmm. You know, you start talking about that idea of the, you know, we don't have a lot of land that you might want to form into some kind of a land art area, but you might want to say that we want, we want that to be aesthetically to be aesthetically pleasing and to not just be a flat piece of park, but we want it to represent something else. And, and I know it becomes very hard when you're looking at it from a very close point, as opposed to a big perspective on land art, but you could do something like that, or you could do something of land art, like, and I'm gonna get the guy, I'm gonna get his name wrong, Andrew Goldsworthy, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you have degenerative art mm -hmm. on there. So that way it changes over time. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's a different ways that you could think about land art just than big, massive bulldozing of pieces of parcel. So, right, so that was, so that's the marina, that, so that's the area that we are, that the Parks and Recreation Department and through them also the Parks and Recreation Commission are going to be looking at developing a park, but the city, the park, the city council has said that they would like the public art commission committee's input in the front end of that process because they recognize that that's a good spot, a potentially good spot for public art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I think that site is really is really critical in all of this because as as somebody in park on park and rec, um, I 
I think most of our park decisions are decidedly unartistic. And it would be nice to have a vision of not specific art, but how could the space be used to include more ideas that lend themselves to, um, to artistic expression, you know, which could be lots of things we haven't thought about, you know, and there are, there are lots of great um, designers and artists who, who can make a space really special. We just have to kind of want to have it go that direction. And as somebody in the park and recs department, I know it's really hard to get that vision wedged in there. And I would like for this committee to wedge itself into that space of park and you know park decisions. Because if not, we're going to end up with another cookie cutter park that's going to really underwhelm the space. Um, so that. I think just as a as a concept, I would like this committee to be on the to be on the menu when it comes to planning a park or planning a space. And um, I think, yeah, I think the city council through their last through their last two park projects have said that they that they are in agreement with that. the 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 art committee was part of the conversation when it came to the Crocker Trail, and it's the council has asked it to be part of the conversation when it comes to this park. Okay. So I, I think the council is right there with you. Yeah. At least you the, know, current, the current council. Right. You know, I mean, even things like um, working out and, and Stuart, is it appropriate for that um, PDF that I did for the visioning for the Baylands to be shared with this group? You know, for example, I mean, just a, a really stupid thing that I, I was researching some, you know, artistic things that looked really cool. And, you know, even with the underneath of the freeway, and, and I can't remember which country it was in, they put a rock climbing wall. So they turned this ugly stanchion into something that was aesthetically much more pleasing. They, they put a garden around it, and it became a, a real rock climbing wall. So even like the workout structures and things like that don't have to be, as you said, things like cookie cutter. Um, but Stuart, would it be appropriate to share that PDF or legal to that? Sure. Regarding? I mean, we can, yeah, do you have it, Angel? I'll, I'll find it, Nelson. I'll, okay. I think I uploaded it to Hightail, but I'm not sure. Um, and it was just, you know, thinking and looking around the world at what, you know, different things have happened in places. And I just put it together for the heck of it and sent right. it to the city that, you know, here's some things I found just, just sort of looking around the internet. So, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like the underneath of a freeway is usually super ugly. And this particular place, they turned into something that was, um, I think there was a little bowling green and all kinds of mm -hmm. different things that um, were a little bit out of the box. So I'll, I'll find that and send it back to you. Okay. Well, one no. thing, that, can I say something real quick? One thing that kind of occurred to me when thinking when uh, thinking about this, this idea and looking at some of the examples that were sent to us as far as other, what other cities have done when putting out policies about their public art is that different cities have different focuses just because of where they are and just because of, of kind of what their, what their meaning is. For instance, Pasadena, which is a very old historic city, wanted to focus a lot on architecture because it's got a lot of really classic architecture and it wanted to have kind of a classic architecture basis in some of its decision on what kind of art would go into that city. And then you've got, you know, a place like Marfa, which is, you know, a town in Texas that's completely out of the box. Like, let's be so far out of the box that that's what defines us. You know, we are, we are the avant-garde, you know, avant-garde vision of what a Texas town could be, you know? And so, you know, what are we? What is Brisbane? You know, what, what uh, what does Brisbane focus on? We're we're a tiny little little town that's I don't know. We have to kind of 
do we get to define our def our our definition of what this town is artistically or well because i think when you put it out there to the public it gets really mushy you know you, you you get to decide you get to make a recommendation to the city council as to what are the values or what are the aspects of the public art that you would like to bring forward it would then go to council for their approval or their conversation and they have more of a public conversation there as well if people come to this one uh, what we could do is i mean we we did send all those out to the group we didn't want to put that on the agenda today because we thought there was a lot of other you know between talking about the, the nevada land art um, seminars and talking about the pieces of property that are available and potential ideas we didn't put specifically talking about that on the agenda and that you know that may be one of those things that we want to talk more we want to have a very specific item on the agenda and not that I think a lot of people will uh, will read our agenda and look at it and say, oh, I want to be part of that conversation. But if you have that conversation today without well, without really announcing it, you may be missing out on some people who may want to participate in that conversation. So no, we can, I, I we, was can, just, we can do that next time. Yeah, I was just saying that, that that is a conversation we need to have. Oh. I'm not saying that I have any answers yeah. on what that's going to be like, but that no, but I think like where a lot of these art art uh, councils start from is from yes. a perspective of what the city wants to be artistically. Right, and I, and I think that's an important conversation. I think therefore that's a conversation that should be agendized specifically for that conversation. So that way people who want to participate in the conversation can can be here for that if they want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beth, you had your hand up? Uh, yeah, um, I think um, it the idea of who we are and our values, I it, it has to be a wider community discussion. Um, it does, the pandemic does make that a little tricky. So we, we're gonna have to be creative about how we're gonna engage the, the, the public on it. Um, I do, I also really appreciated the things that were sent out about um, temporary art, because I think that that also gives us a chance to kind of try different things. And also that a community, I mean, this is, I moved into Brisbane 25 years ago, and this is not the Brisbane that I moved into at all. So um, we have to also know that things change. And, you know, like, you know, while, while a sculpture of Jefferson Davis may have been really hot shit at the time, now it's pretty, it's an embarrassment. So, you know, we also have to think about how, how history is reflected. Um, and then comes another point that I wanted to make is um, one of the artists in the land art, oh, she's very famous actually, her name is Patricia Johansson. And she was the one that had those sort of concrete things that went through the woods and all those, those panels that went through the woods. We actually have a Patricia Johansson right there on this map that you're showing, believe it or not, um, over at Candlestick. So it's like, actually it's on the curve part of where the, the bay goes around. So if you were to take 101 up a little bit more and get off at, at the first Candlestick thing there and walk and park and walk around, there is a, esteemed Patricia Johansson public artwork, land artwork there. Um, and I, I have walked around it several times and I found it very underwhelming. I do in general really love her work, um, but I, it's just, I think that there's lessons that we can learn by looking at past land art and looking at them in reality um, as time passes because um, it, to me, it felt kind of like lackluster. There was the signage, I don't know, wasn't communicating to me why it was important, why this was there, um, who was responsible, what the, were people thinking about at the time. Um, none of that felt meaningful. And I think that we can learn a lot too by, it's part of, I think that this is, this is a new committee. It's a massive field and educating ourselves by looking and visiting the land art that we have here in the Bay Area, like there are, I think three or four Andy, you mentioned Andy, Andy Goldsworthy, or three or four Andy Goldsworthy's in the Bay Area down at Stanford. There's two in Golden Gate Park. Um, there's one at the De Young Museum, so, and there may be more. And there's, there's a lot in the Presidio. Yeah, so, oh right, there's one in the Presidio that I know of, yep. And so anyways, so, and, and so, just to kind of think, really look around and, and visit on your own time, land art and public art things and kind of ask ourselves, maybe we could have a set of questions that we're asking, you know, like 
well, what were they thinking? What were they trying to do? What was, who were the people that um, were behind this? Uh, what was the artist trying to communicate? How did it, how, where, where is the community involvement? Um, what is the dialogue that went on with the community? It's just kind of like, and how, does it hold up over time? Um, the Patricia Johansson being painted concrete was just lackluster to me at this point. It was probably really great at the time that it was put in. And then how do we, if, you know, so we have to really think in terms of our implementation guidelines also about how we're going to plan to keep something up. But the thing I liked about the temporary as a kind of also getting our feet wet idea is that generally they don't last longer than 10 years. And so, you know, we don't, and, and, and creating public art that's going to look good 10 years from now, if it's not some bronze sculpture, is pretty tricky. And also is going to resonate with people and where we are. Think about where we were 10 years ago. We would have never known we would be in the middle of a pandemic and have a whole other set of concerns that we have now. So I, I really um, am excited about talking more about temporary, temporary as a way of getting started. And um, it is, in the end, a lot of times as much work as, um, as putting in something permanent, but we wouldn't have the ongoing maintenance. Jeanette? Um, that just reminded me um, about what, I think it was the very last session, number 12. Um, I wrote some notes on, uh, it was um, land art overlooking and overlaying. I think the speaker was Lucy Lippard. And um, one of the ones I actually liked it so much that I wrote it down. So I thought I'd share that with you. It was, it was a green growing wall. It was a big building and the one, it was huge. And it was just, you know, we see them, but that one just really caught my eye. And I just wrote it down and exclamation because it just like, I, I just thought it was really interesting, especially in an urban environment where you're going to have a lot of buildings and um, you know, I don't know the situation on the Baylands, how, you know, but I think also that's a way of possibly mitigating buildings. And if we don't have a lot of space that could help mitigate a building as having this beautiful living wall. So I just want to share that with you. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's land art or ar architecture or landscape. I don't know what you call it, but anyways, that spoke to me. So I wanted to share that. I thought that was pretty cool. That's it. So should we move to talking about like possible locations? I feel like that's going to be kind of a, like it could be, you know, a long conversation about, you know, with us throwing out ideas and we'll make sure we have enough time. That's fine with me. I was thinking that we were, we wrapped up on the land art and we were moving into possible locations that we started talking about the park at Sierra Point. That was I the just, sense I got from Karen at least. Yeah, I just, um, oh, I thought that was Karen like being like, oh, let's make sure we, I thought that was more of a side thing, no. but um, I could have misinterpreted. I just, I, do you have the list of, you know, there are some new members on the committee and this definitely has been a conversation that the former members of the, or the existing members prior to the new members have had a few times. Does staff have like a list of, of some of that so that we don't have to repeat the conversation is there like a list of some of the sites that you know that we've discussed before so we can kind of rediscuss with new members and determine whether those sites are still of you know of interest and add some new ones so i mean the the sites that i don't remember i don't know what what we have from the minutes from the past and how easy that would be to draw up draw up but we talked about going, doing something along visitation. We talked about doing something along the walkways that are in town. But wait, don't, don't we have a map? We have a map that shows map, all the places. Well, the, we do have a map that's showing, that shows what, of our public, the spots that, that, that Angel has up on the computer. Of our oh public. yeah, these this this is the map. The blue spot is the map. city owned property. So oh. right. So as I said, we we had talked about visitation, and I know Angel was showing a visitation. We talked about the public the public walkways, which are the blue areas, and I can point on my screen, but it doesn't really help pointing on my screen. You have that one, and then aren't the walkways on the other side of, as well? Yes. 
So those we were talking about public those public walkways. I mean, other spots that we you know you interestingly enough now you know we own all four corners or we will shortly own all four corners of um, the entrance into town. And I think that was one of the conversations that we had in the past as well. Um, not the Bank of America site in the past, but the other three that we own, which is the parking lot, the area next to the to the fire station, and then where the lions do their um, tree, tree lot. lot. That's another possibility. Um, you know, one of the areas I don't think we had talked about in the past that you that you might want to think that you might want to look at is. You know, there is some area on, at Mission Blue that would be available for public art, either inside or outside, depending how you want to do that. Um, we do own we do own a parcel out in the middle of the bay, which I don't really think we want to do anything with. <laughs> and that would be kind of that would be kind of weird. I don't think I don't think BCDC would let us do anything with that either. Um, I think those are the I think those the other wow. one. No, no, hold on. No, no. Another one that we had talked about was the roundabout at San Francisco and Alvarado. We had talked about doing something at that roundabout. Um, and then we also, the other one that we talked about was if you want to do obviously something in the community park itself, or the other one possibly you could do something at would be the, what is affectionately known as Turtle Park. And then we also own the site next to the pool, where the old king, uh, where the silver co-op, the silver spot co-op is. Um, you know, in the past there's been things along the fence line there that you could possibly do, but you don't want to make sure that it's compatible with the use of the children that use it on a daily basis. Um, I would stay away from anything in the acres from an from a art perspective. But the interesting thing, aspect of that is if you want to do something in the acres, there are a couple of spots in the acres where there are benches. And I can't tell you exactly which parcels they are. I've walked to them when I was on OSAC. And so you might, you know, if you want to do something like with benches or something more artistic with, you know, even just that is like, you know, are there benches in town that you would want to put up? Because I know that, you know, the town at times is difficult for some people to walk. The you know from top to bottom, and doing something where you create little way stations from a public art perspective might be an interesting public art project. I'll go. I saw I saw Danette's hand first, then you, Beth. I have a question about the triangle parcel um, across from the park, the one on Bayshore. Um, it's such an odd piece of land right on a highway and between a highway and a road. And I was wondering what city councils, have they, has the city council discussed or council members of what you could possibly do with this or have they thought about putting commercial or built housing or, or I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious about your feedback on what discussions or thoughts have occurred in the 20 years I have been here, that I don't think that parcel has ever come up for conversation. I think it's like really going to depend on what happens with the Bayland because the Baylands, because the whole entrance to town is per, being proposed to be changed um, with high speed rail and all of that and the bridge and everything. So um, that's yeah. always kind of been like a place I know Randy has said like for safety, like if somebody needs to like pull off like we kind of talked once about like hey maybe we could put a tiny home village or something and then like I think there was concerns that cars are coming so fast that there's like an accident so um that you need a place to to pull over so I I mean it's not been something that's been really discussed too much I think that if whatever happens at Bank of America site could also in, impact you know what goes there that could end up being community garden or something because it's such a that you know the, the, you, you can't do maybe a whole lot with that but that might be like a space with if there's housing for example at the bank of america site that might be like a common area that people can use or a community area so it hasn't i, I don't feel like that's going to be something that we 
dive into in the near future either. I think there's just a lot of other things that are higher priority. So then my question is, is I guess my question is, I was curious about that because it's kind of big, but not, I mean, it's just an odd spot. And is that something we should put on the shelf on that and eliminate that one? I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, oh, should we not look at that piece of property? I think, you know, I think it's- As Madison said, we thought high speed rail breathing down our neck about changing the entrance to town. Do I hope that ever happens? Absolutely not. Is it a possibility? Yes, it is. So from that perspective, maybe we shouldn't be even looking at that area only from that perspective. I mean, high-speed rail, uh, saber rattling, and they can continue to saber rattle, but at the end of the day, they can pull eminent domain any time they want. Well, then my question is, do any other parcels in that area that are in blue, will that affect the entrance to town? Uh, the one like the little two across from it? Are there any other, yeah, those? Like, is that something that would, like we should not? So it is an interesting question. So the triangle is the par is the park and ride, looking at it. Um, and we it is it not, a, what, it's hmm? not. No, it's not. It's no, not. It's not the park am, I, am, I not, am I not seeing it correctly then? Yeah, the park and ride's over that side. Yeah. That's oh, good. okay. I'm sorry. So uh, the other side's one, like okay. That that okay. That triangle is the one that goes fire over station. the fire station. Yeah. Yeah. And to the yes. Sorry, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. Tells me how, how good I am at being able to read a map. I'm not that's why. That's why I started directions. finance and parks and recreation and not in engineering. I'm not going to um, ask you the directions. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. I mean, it's been taught. That one's been. I mean, the challenge is going to be is if with high speed rail. I mean, they've, I think they've talked about basically that the entrance to town would go from where it is today to, I think, where the fire station is, I think. So, but obviously, but, you know, the challenge is going to be is that what it is, is they're going to be moving the bridge, but Bayshore Boulevard is going to be Bayshore Boulevard. Um, so that creates that parcel will, will be there. What it will be used for, I mean, you're right. We talk about it for um, tiny homes. We've also talked about it as a park entrance, as a more of a park entrance to town. I don't think it should come off of the list of things that you might want to talk about. I don't know if that would be your first part, your first area that you would want to talk about as a, as a committee. And then Beth, just... I was going to say Beth, because I, I told Beth that she would go next, but I also see Lisa and Camille have their hands up. So Beth, do you want to go? Yeah. Um, so a couple things was um, I think that we that again we're it, we're going to be constantly changing. Uh, there's going to be a lot of development and things that are going on either with high speed rail or Caltrain or the Baylands development and also po potentially Parkside. So again, I I think that's another argument for going temporary. Um, but I also want to I also want us to think about why are we putting some public art in a particular place? And what is what do we hope to accomplish? So like, for example, um, do we want people to use a particular entrance to town or, or to frequent a particular park? Or do we want to have an opportunity to teach people about something like um, cleaning brown lands or, or, or water or whatever? So like for example, Stuart, when you said, well, we own some property in the middle of the bay, I'm not sure where that is, or if you were speaking of the lagoon. No, um, no, if you show the bay. It's in the bay. Okay, great. <laughs> so I'm seeing that as an artist, I'm going, I want that. <laughs> you, you talk to BCDC and you will no longer want that. Okay, well, no, but it all depends on if we find ways to um, help them further their mission by creating a, a, some kind of maybe it's some kind of uh, public art that actually cleans the bay and is beautiful to look at for people who are driving on 101 and then is giving them a message um, and an understanding about some kind of amazing new technology that or the necessity to really take care of our bay and so it's i'm just saying that every no, you're single, right every single plot of land that it needs to have some kind of reason for being, um, and also that it has an opportunity, is it is an opportunity for us to address certain 
environmental issues, so social issues. People you have used um, public art as a way to stop graffiti or to keep, um, you know, maybe gang activity happening. Or you know, there's it's uh, people. For example, at one point uh, Clay had approached me about the problem along Tunnel Road where people were just dumping, and um, it seems that they they put up those those um, cement um, blocks and. It, it's definitely, when I drive by there, I don't see as much garbage as I used to because there isn't as many places to pull over. But that was an opportunity to make something actually beautiful and interesting and to let whoever was dumping going, hey, we're here, we're, this is land that we are monitor monitoring. It's not just your dumping ground and we're not gonna clean up after you. So I think um, that if we really look at every one of these plots of land in terms of also determining um, our priorities. Um, what are some of the things that we need to address in our town and how do we want people to be able to have places to, get, to congregate or interact or to learn something or to care for the environment in some way? These are all, every one of these plots represents an opportunity for that. I think Lisa and Camille, you had your hands up. Yeah, go Lisa. Oh. I was just going to second what uh, Beth just said about the opportunities. You know, when you talk about um, when you talk about high speed rail and eminent domain and all that stuff, you can have some really interesting temporary art in those space in those spaces that just I believe that that public art um, can bring attention to the city of Brisbane as a place that you don't just drive through. And that's what's, that, that, that wedge of land there is right along Bayshore where a lot of people drive. And if you did something really interesting there that caught people's attention, they might say, hey, where is this place? Oh, Brisbane. I don't even think about Brisbane. Which brings me to another point that since we have this intersection of land by what used to be Bank of America, becoming, uh, property of Brisbane, it's a perfect opportunity to have some kind of public art or something that designates a sign, perhaps, that designates Brisbane as Brisbane. Be so that people, when they drive by, they say, oh, city of Brisbane, you know, um, there's a sculpture there. That's where the city of Brisbane is, you know, and because it's a long bay shore, I really think that this is that all those areas are an opportunity for us to come, not necessarily come up with something, but, but think of that as an entrance to town that temporary art or maybe a permanent piece of art that could designate the entrance of town as far as something that could be an artistic project that would be really, really great for this city. Because I think that, that right now people just, just go past on Bayshore and they don't even think about Brisbane. So it'd be really, I, it's just an opportunity that I see that uh, both that area could, could really be an opportunity to tackle for something that makes an impact. Camille, then Danette. Um, yeah, I just, I think all of, what do I think? I think that everybody is saying the right things and it's wonderful because it's getting us close to what we as a committee are beginning to flush out as what our values for this community is. And that's what's really wonderful. And I, I just wanted to point out that I think one of what we're gonna to have to do is somehow bite the bullet and begin these conversations with where, what are maybe two or three places we wanna to begin to consider to apply these discussions to making art. You know, we're gonna to have to get in the pool, so to speak. And then with because of these discussions, we can bring those values to that spot, because otherwise we're going to continue going in a circle. You know, I, it's just my nature. I'm a director. The show's got to go on. So that's kind of where that's all I want to say. Jeanette? I yeah, I'd like um, uh, Lisa's comments, and I would have to agree with her, because when I looked at this map, that was the first place that caught my eye was that triangle shape. But then, and that's why I brought it up because I wanted to know if there was some long-term plan. Yes, the city owns it, but is there some long-term plan? What have, has 
the discussion been on that parcel. Um, but I agree, I think it would be great to have something out kind of towards the entrance of town to catch your eye, to draw people in. And that maybe could be the beginning of some kind of art that starts the journey of art throughout our town. So I do like something around where our entrance, but then that might not be our entrance. So I don't know, but I, I, I find that triangle parcel interesting, so. Okay, I mean, my I had guess my virtual is that, hand up, like. Oh, I see it. For a right. while. <laughs> Sorry, Madison. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would just like table that. I would table that. I would just table that parcel right now, and I would table Bank of America right now, like for that being the next project. The council just purchased that. We don't know what the plan for that site is. And that's really going to be important when we determine that would probably be the most likely place we would put something because that's you're actually coming into town on the opposite side of the street. Welcome to Brisbane. That's like not in the right direction. So it would be Bank of America side, but we just bought it and we need to go through like a whole community outreach to figure out what's going to go there. And, and, and when we determine what's going to be a, then, you know, like how, what's, how much space we have for something. So I just don't think that I would put the brakes on those two sites at the moment. Um, because I could see the council being like, oh, you've done all this work, but like, we're just not ready to commit to something here. I would encourage, you know, there were other ideas that we had as a committee that had, no one's really said, maybe Karen said a little bit in the beginning, but like, you know, we talked about walkways and how walkways in Brisbane are such like a critical thoroughfare in our community that are used regularly to get, you know, to neighbors' houses, to explore the mountain, and how like a lot of them aren't very nice, quite frankly. And how can we maybe like spruce up those areas and maybe that would be a draw for people to come from outside of town to do like all the different stairs and have art incorporated into the stair the the stairwells like they do you know they're in Piedmont there's a whole network of stairs and people come just to walk the stairs or like in um in in the sunset there's a bunch of different sets of stairs that are all covered in mosaics and they speak to those mosaics speak to what the sunset is about and its look proximity to the ocean and all of that. So I think there's storytelling that could be done in spaces that we regularly use and maybe want to make more inviting. Um, plus we're getting money, I think that to, to fix some of those areas or to install, install some walkways. So that could be like a good partnership with work that's already being done. Another thing that we talked about was like really investing in visitation. And this is something that I know the chamber has really been pushing is like an investment in our downtown. We have so many great businesses that have just opened in the last year, like Chef Reina. We have Staggerly Goods. We have the Mademoiselle. We have Skin Body Zen. Um, and so how can we invest more in our only retail downtown space? And so one of the things that we had talked about in the past was like little surprises, like little small pieces of art that you don't necessarily know are there, but when you're out walking, they surprise you and they capture your attention. Um, so I think that maybe like focusing on a piece that's in town that, or like some, you could do something with a plug preserve, even though that's already, that's already kind of got a thing, but um, that's what I would recommend. I think is like to pick a site that we know we could likely move forward with that's not going to result in the council having to do all kinds of other evaluation before we can get to a project. Does the committee want to pick a site tonight or two tonight so that way we can agendize it for a future meeting? Good idea. Would... So what two, what two or three sites would you like to see us talk about? Next, either, next I have one other question though, if you don't mind. Sure. In the park, in the community park area, that space behind, not the green area, but behind the bathrooms, the little kind of enclosed garden, is that also a place that can be considered as a place for art? 
any place Absolutely. you want to consider a place okay. work. Just want to make sure. Okay. Totally. I think that's a that's a great place because there's not a whole lot going on back there. There is kind of an extra plug preserve out there where there are plugs that got retired that they can't fit next to Julie's. So they've kind of put them back there. But that's definitely a place that you could have something. It's, it's got a nice little zen feel to it too. But I would say the walkways and visitation would be sort of easy marks for us. Just about. Can I hear you? Walkway and visitation, it was what Karen was suggesting is two of the spots to, to try and to agendize first. Or maybe we could put the park on there too and have three. Oh, could we have the three of them? I mean, that. You can have all three. That's, that's fine. I'd like to talk about three places unless there's someone else who has another one. We could do the walkways since they're thinking about that and possibly with visitation and also the back side of the park. And knowing that in each one of those, once it's decision that we're all under the understanding that we would definitely want someone to come in and curate the be with us on that process. That would be my recommendation. And for something like for something like the walkways and for something like visitation, that could be many different pieces and it's one cohesive story or one cohesive, you know, plan. Like the plan for visitation is obviously going to be very different than the plan for the walkways. And each walkway might have a different theme, but it's together they say something about the environment, the mountain, us as a community. So I think that they all are going to have their own identities that you know a consultant or an expert can help us plan each place or many consultants we don't need the same one for everything sure absolutely lisa well i'm still i'm thinking about um i know that i know that uh that the entrance of town is is uh, too important to just, you know, put something out there that's not ready to be accepted. I get that. But I also think that you could still do something temporary um, along that strip um, that could be pretty exciting. I just think that's a really fun drive-by place. There is some art, like for instance, in Napa, there's a thing called the running fence which is a which is a sculpture that somebody did of a fence. It looks like a fence, and then it kind of takes off as you drive by it. It kind of swirls around, and and it's just this fun thing. And it's not forever. It's wood. You know what I mean? It's like I still think you could do something fun out there along the along the strip that that could come down later. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be monumentally forever kind of a thing. But some temporary art is still okay. And I just think that's a that's a cool site because it's right along Bayshore. Do you want to have conversation about four different sites or just the three sites next time? Uh, I think, well, my two cents. Let's take one site off and keep it to three. I think three is a lot to be talking about. And um, so we should just decide which three. I, I don't know. I mean, I think th I think four will never get, get to. I don't know how other people feel. But I agree. I'm good with. Yeah, I'm good with the three. Okay. And we can take off another one and look at the triangle because um, I know that, you know, it would be good to hear from other people on what why don't we just kind of take a little, you know, thumbs up on the different three and see which ones we want to look at. And I'm open to any of that as long as I think they're just three so that we can have a conversation that that's moves forward. That's because that, eventually our hope is to be able to address it all anyway. Yeah, so, I'd be happy to take off the walkways because when you think about the walkways, that could be an entire theme on its own. Not, not as a, you no. know, an addition to visitation. I mean, visitation yeah, is one thing. Behind the, 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 the bathrooms is, a, is another thing. And, you know, and as Lisa said that, you know, some little temporary thing on that. I could see some antique looking fence or something that was just interesting to look at. 
as you said. But yeah. I just told it all about. Sorry. Just as dry by art there, I think something yeah. really interesting and even temporary would be fun to do there. You know, I remember being up um, in Calistoga area and driving down some crazy street and, and, and you, right, there was this fence that was just so cool and old and, and meandered that really did get your attention, so. Yeah, that's the running fence. That's mm -hmm. the running fence and it's a really, was a great little installation, you know, yeah. it's just wood. Yep. Yeah. Beth, you have something? Yeah, I, I just, um, I think that it, uh, taking the um, pathways is not off right now is not a good idea since you mentioned that they're moving ahead with restoring them. So I think that uh, we want to be at the table when they're making those plans so that um, it gets incorporated into the uh, restoration job. So I would say that given that's happening, that should be a priority. And then the other part is that I, I too would love to see something for the outside of Brisbane, but I don't think that we're ready for prime time yet and that it would be maybe advantageous to, you know, try some different things out that feel more um, just for us. And then, and then eventually I think in the, the creative process, it will start to reveal what we wanna put out to the, to the general public. So where are we at in the timeline with those walkways that we have approved funds for? I'd have to check with Randy. I'm not sure. But we're not under construction yet, right? No, not yet. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that the design. I think that the council approved design work, but I don't think they approved um, capital money for the construction of them. I'm not sure. I'd have to yeah. check. Yeah, is it on our capital projects? That they're going to be reviewing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, I think they were on the capital projects list on Thursday. I know night. it's been super, super high priority, but like, yeah, I mean, they're laying the concrete for the stairs, and we wanted to do a mosaic. That would be the time, like, right? Yeah, but I mean, I it. think if you, I think if you have a conversation ahead of time and say, "Here's what we want to have," and then whenever that happens, you'd be able to. It would be part of the plan. Yeah. So it sounds like. There is a relative consensus that the three that we want to talk about next time are visitation, the walkways, and the area behind the park. That the, at, after the after we've come successfully through one or two projects, then looking at the entrance to town would be our fourth. I think we should have a list, like keep a list that we're able that staff's able to access yeah. the next time. We're like, okay, here are all the things that have been that the committee has said has been really high. Places right. of priority, and then we can like really continue to reevaluate them and say, you know what, this one's moved to the top of the list, yeah. um, or yeah. this one's no longer relevant. Visitation was it was the highest priority of the last commission. I mean, that was the one that, that you all agreed that you wanted to do something. You want, but you wanted to do the skateboard park first because it was there, but then visitation. So I can see visitation walkway behind the park as the three for this time, we will add the entrance to town as number four. Um, obviously we'll be part of, you know, you will be part of the Sierra Point Parkway design that, you know, so whenever that happens, you'll be part of that. You know, and I think other ones on the list would again be the skateboard park, it would be Mission Blue, it would be the roundabout on San Francisco, it would be Turtle Park. And then further down the list, if you want, would be something you know, if you want to do something in the Bayland and the, sorry, not the Baylands, up on the mountain, but something that would be environmentally sensitive to what's on the mountain already. And then we also still need to talk about trying to figure out what we want to do about the, um, the Baylands consultant, because I think that's a bigger conversation. So how about the next meeting we talk specifically about these kinds, these three areas, what are the values that we're trying to, in, what, what are the values that you're trying to engender in those areas? What's this, what kinds of projects you're, what, what kind of emotions are you trying to evoke? And then what kinds of projects, because as you said, different projects might have different types of curators or different kinds of experts to work on those to help. Um, so we can do that next time. And then maybe, Beth? Yeah, I just want to add one thing that, um, you know, we don't have to have a solution for it, but it, it can't be neglected is how are we going to engage the community in that discussion, particularly around the values and the identity issues and, you know, what we want to be able to convey in the public art. Because if we th have that as an afterthought, we're going to be in trouble. Okay, so we can add that to the agenda for one next time when we talk about the values is 
how to engage the community in, in the conversation. Um, and then probably the meeting, depending on where we end up with that one, maybe the meeting after that, we would want to start talking a little bit more about the, a master plan for, you know, how do you start the master plan process for the Baylands? Because I know you, I sent out a lot of different, um, Angel sent out a lot of different uh, cities and, you know, and I know an academic paper about it. So, you know, if we take about a month or a month and a half to get through those, we can start having that conversation about how to start engaging a potential consultant for that. And we have six more minutes left in today's meeting. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I know the city council, I think at their meeting, Beth? Yeah, I just wanted to call attention to the, um, ask people, Angel sent out some links that I sent from Forecast Public Art. And they also have trainings that they will do online. They're based in Minneapolis, but they can do trainings on public art process and you know they can tailor it to wherever we're at. So um, I like to ask that people look at those links that uh, Angel just sent out today. And if you have time, there's a 20 minute, very non-academic talk by Jack Becker, who is really one of the foremost people on public art in the United States. And um, it just sort of, kind of gives a sense of opening up, taking off the, the, the ceiling of what's possible in, in public art and as community engagement. So um, it's a lot of fun, it's 20 minutes. Uh, so have a look at that if you can. And maybe we can think about um, enlisting uh, some of their trainers to work with us. It's a nonprofit too. Great. And so we need to choose our, our two dates i think we're going to have to start going to two meetings a month if possible and have them as standing dates if possible um can we pull up calendars right now tuesdays are great tuesdays and we have like the 8th and the 22nd got first in the 15th. How does oh, we're that into March? I'm looking in February. February. Oh. We have to get the master plan going pretty quick here. So we need to start on that. So definitely February. Uh, that's open for me. My computer is gonna die soon. So um, if so, you know, um, I lose you, that's what it is with the 8th and the 22nd, 3rd. Okay. That works for me too. First, the 15th look good to me. I like the 8th and the 22nd. I'm having surgery on the 21st. So if we could just push it back a little bit, that would work for me as far as health goes. I could still be there. I just might not be 100%. We're talking February, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you want to do February 1st and the 15th? Um, well, the 22nd, I don't know that 22nd is going to work. I'm out. Of, I'm flying in from out of town and I fly in at 310. So Oh, who I knows forgot. If, yeah. Who knows if flights are on time? So that might be challenging. Um, yeah. We're both okay. out of town. First and 15th. That's the only reason I said that. Normally, I'm pretty flexible. I can do first and 15th. Okay. We already have a subcommittee that day. I have a subcommittee, I guess. Yeah. It won't overlap. You have the idea, subcommittee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Well, and also the first and the 15th, those first and third Tuesdays is also the same weeks as council meeting evenings. So just throwing that out there. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying that I usually first and yeah, I mean, I could, I think I kind of need to evaluate every month, but I can commit to these two days now. I don't know that I could say like every other Tuesday for eternity, but okay. So shall we get the first and the 15th on the calendar now then? Yeah, is it 4.30 then? At mm -hmm. 4.30. Hey, you guys, I've got to leave promptly at yep. 6, so. Yeah. Is it gonna be the same link or are you gonna send out a, new, a different one every time? Um, I'll try to keep it the same link. Thank yeah. you. Then the, the calendar just adds it all in nicely. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Have a good evening. Bye.